Today is ours. Let's live it. And love is strong. Let's give it. A song can help. Let's sing it. And peace is dear. Let's bring it. The past is gone. Don't rule it. Our work is here. Let's do it. The world is wrong. Let's right it. If evil comes, let's fight it. The road is rough. Let's clear it. The future vast, don't fear it. Is faith asleep? Let's awake it. Today is ours. Let's take it. As we think, young people around the world, too, are already directly suffering from the consequences of our country's lack of ability to take bold action on climate change, both here in the United States and globally. And so we're here to say that this is it, Congress. This is it, President Obama. This is the United States of America. We have all the innovation. We have all, all we're lacking is political will. And that is why there are 12,000 young people in Washington, D.C. to make sure we have the political will to make it possible. And Welcome, Capital Climate Activists! stop the biggest institution that was being created for corporations to run the world, your protest, your rally, your action today is definitely the signal to the world that the rule of injustice and the rule by oxymorons is over. <laughs> you cannot have clean coal. And 2009 has to be the age of Earth democracy, where we tell the governments of the world, don't hide behind each other yeah. to pretend that someone somewhere wants dirty coal, yeah. dirty nuclear, yeah. dirty biofuel. Yeah. Those are all false solutions. We have the real stuff and we are going to build it and no one's going to stop us. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Washington. We've been waiting for you. Hey, not only do you know your power, Washington has felt your power. Thank you to Sierra Club. Thank you to everyone from Kentucky that I met today, from West Virginia, from all across our country and the world to come here to send a message to Congress. This plant makes us sick. No more coal! No more coal! No I want to start by introducing you to two of my children, Kit Kennedy and Connor Kennedy, who came here today to be arrested with the rest of you. Yeah. I reported just now, well, what about clean coal? And you know that clean coal is a dirty lie. Yeah. And they are liquidating the state for cash. Yeah. And they are destroying, they are destroying America's heritage, our landscapes, our health, our prosperity and Don Blankenship is making himself rich by making everybody else poor. He's raising standards of living for himself by lowering quality of life for everybody in our country. And not only is he destroying the Appalachians, but he has destroyed, and this industry has destroyed, all of the waterways in 19 states. A million lost workdays, a million asthma attacks, 
These are the true costs of coal. A trillion dollars in subsidies these costs represent to this industry every year, and they could not survive in the marketplace if they had to pay their freight. They're not just destroying the environment. They're subverting our democracy because what they're doing is illegal, what they're doing in Appalachia, what they're poisoning our water, poisoning our air. They can't do that in this country. They are stealing the public trust. The only way that they can get away with it is by capturing the agencies, the regulatory agencies that are supposed to be protecting us from pollution and by subverting our democracy, by capturing these crooked politicians up on Capitol Hill who are nothing more than indentured servants to Arch Coal, Peabody Coal, and Massey Coal, and we've got to take back our democracy. You know, and I've waited 20 years to see what the global warming movement was going to look like, and boy does it look beautiful. And in, just in case anybody ever had the slightest doubt whether or not movements work, you know, it's worth remembering that this plant for 103 years has been burning coal. And it was last Thursday that Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid decided maybe it could get switched to natural gas. I don't think that was just a coincidence. There are no gifts in this world. There's only organizing and movements and people doing what it takes to make change happen. And that's what we're doing. Now, one down, you know. We've got 600 of these things left around the country that we've got to take care of and we've got to take care of fast. This is the most dangerous thing on earth. A coal-fired power plant operating just the way it's supposed to operate destroys this planet. Nothing has to go wrong with it. It is wrong to begin with. We finally have a number that helps us understand our predicament. The bottom line for this earth, the number that's going to have to animate this movement in the United States and around the world for the next few years until we win. And that number is 350, as in parts per million CO2. As Dr. Hansen said in that paper and his team, any value greater than that in the atmosphere is not compatible with the planet on which civilization developed and to which life on Earth is adapted, okay? That's a pretty basic bottom line. We're already over that number. The air out here tonight, thanks to plants, this afternoon, thanks to plants like this one, holds 387 parts per million CO2. That's why the Arctic is melting. That's why Australia is on fire. That's why every glacier in the world is receding. That's the trouble. In Copenhagen in December, we're going to have to solve that problem somehow. Governments were instituted among people for the benefit of all the people, not for special interests. We all are now very hopeful with our new government that things are going to change, but it's extremely important that we be vigilant, and the message that you are sending is extremely important, and you need to remain uh, vigilant. The science is clear. We cannot burn all of the fossil fuels without producing consequences for humanity and all the other species on the planet that are unacceptable. It has become clear that we're going to have to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to less than 350 parts per million, perhaps. But the critical action required is phase out of coal emissions in the near future if we go another decade with continuing uh, increases in emission, there's no way to get back to 350. So it's extremely important uh, that the actions begin, begin now. And what our government must do is address the root cause of the problem. And that is the fact that we must price fossil fuels higher than clean alternative uh, energies and energy efficiency. And in what is happening instead is we are subsidizing fossil fuels, which is absolutely crazy uh, for, for
for humanity and the future of the planet. And this is our one chance in these next few years. So you've got to really, what you're doing now is absolutely the perfect message. And you've just got to continue that so that our government will lead the rest of the world and solve this problem.